Hello everybody, welcome to the Q&A and Critique number 87. It's currently 2015 UTC on Friday and I'm here with a special guest and a good old friend of mine, Purse or Purse Beats. So Purse is here today to answer some of my questions concerning the two topics that we have today. And the two topics that we have in mind is concerning healthy self-critique as an artist, how do you do it, and also my next question concerning technology and art is how can I be creative with uh, the art tools and the new AI stuff that's coming out soon? Mainly because recently there, as we have noticed over the past few months, there has been progress with the technology, which means we're getting the second generation of Runway, which is generating better text to video, including better coherence and even crazier things happening. And also recently, with this new computer that I now have, I've also been getting my feet wet into some of these models. So to give you a little bit of context before we begin the interview, Furs has been helping me get my feet wet with this, and has also been part of this community within the generation of art with machine learning models since the beginning. So I'm very honored to have you back here today, and I would like to see how you're doing. How's your day today? Oh, thanks, buddy. Um, not too bad. Won't complain. Won't complain. Nice. Won't complain. Good. Oh, and just um, before we continue, at the latter half of this interview, we're going to be taking a look at the finished art, including your piece here, Catty, which I really liked, your sword, uh, your piece I'm kind of drunk, and a couple of other pieces from the community. So stay tuned for the latter half after the interview. So stick around. So, Perz, tell me about um, your latest work. What have you been up to these few days? Uh, last few days, uh, I just got into the Runway ML Gen 2 beta, so I've been doing a lot of testing with them. Um, it's a uh, Gen 1 was uh, video to video, image to video, and text and image, or text and video to video, meaning you can, you know, type in just words and it'll make videos, or you can type in words in a picture and it'll make a video based on the words in the picture, or you can type in words and upload a video and it'll it'll do a prompt on the video. But uh, this new generation can just do straight up text prompts and it looks absolutely nuts. Um, got a few examples online and I'll, I'll drop some stuff later when we're done talking and uh, you guys can see it, but um, this stuff is moving so, 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 so quickly. Yes, I was impressed. The latest piece that I saw from you uh, earlier today was of a singing bear and a couple of creatures drumming <laughs> to some nice jazz. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, those incredible. Were, yeah, those are just text prompts straight into uh, Runway, and then I just, you know, some post-processing after. Made a little song for the jazz uh, deer rabbit. Uh, <laughs> Who knows what it is? I don't know what they are exactly. And now we have the swinging bear. <laughs> this piece really blew me away. Yeah, considering the prompt for that is like a uh, happy bear playing acoustic guitar in the woods. Like, that's it. That's uh, incredible. And this was retweeted by Eclectic Method, which is quite a large account. Yeah, and he recorded a little song for the bear screaming in an existential rage. Yeah. I'm also hitting that existential rage, well, not rage, but existential questions right at the moment, and this is why I have you today, actually. So, with all this latest tech, you've got access to Gen 2, you've also had access to what other machine learning art generation techniques? I've, you were... I've... Uh, yeah, I've been a beta tester for um, Midjourney, um, stable diffusion, like stability stuff, I've been a beta tester for Genmo... Uh, what's the other one? Oh, uh, Wonder Studio. Uh, a few I can't even talk about because they're not out yet. Um, and a lot of uh, audio beta testing I've been doing as well for Harmony. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get in there. I don't know how I keep getting into these beta programs, but yes, you uh, seem to have like a secret key card to all of these amazing projects. 
So Wonder Studio, I've had a look at Wonder Studio, which is a software for automatically doing clean plates of characters and then replacing them with CG characters. How did you find that experience? Well, Wonder Studio is really cool. Um, they're, uh, that, that one is almost completely hands-off. You just upload the clip and, and select the actors and select the replacement characters. And also, I believe you can upload your own uh fbx's and uh it'll actually put your character in there if you want um and it's cool because they spit back all the stuff you would need to then later composite that footage you know at home so they give you the alpha plate so you can see like the outline of the stuff they give you the uh the the piece with the background removed or sorry with the actor removed and the background replaced they give you uh an fbx uh with the uh uh with the character that you selected or uploaded, and they give you a blend file as well um, with everything kind of all together so you can just see what they've done. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing what they can do. It, they, they track the actor in the footage. Uh, as long as they can see the feet and the hands and stuff, it's pretty good. I, so in some of my testing, the characters were a little shaky and skatey because the, they had like the... Like a woman had a long flowing dress on, for instance, so I couldn't see her feet. So she was kind of just skating along the the ground, little things like that. But he, the, 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 the amount that this stuff has come in the last three months is just insane. That's incredible. Yes, you've been blowing me away. So concerning this technology, where do you think it's going to go in the next couple of months, if not a year or two? I don't even, I don't I can't even begin to speculate because if you asked me that three months ago, I would have told you that we wouldn't be where we are now in five years and we're there in, you know, three months. So the, like the, the rate of this stuff coming out is accelerating at a breakneck speed. It seems like every day there's a new tech uh, to learn or to, to just be wowed by. And like the stuff that we're, we were playing with is almost the middle tier. The stuff that we can't play with yet is absolutely wild. Uh, NVIDIA just released a, uh, a paper on their new method that runs at 24 frames per second doing live video. Uh, and it looks really good. Uh, you can actually drop the link to that in the chat. I believe it's called LDM. Uh, NVIDIA... Uh, yeah, video LDM. It's actually the research was done here in Toronto. Kind of cool. That is incredible. I'm gonna load this up. But yeah, that uh, if you scroll down, uh, you're gonna see a a video of a bear playing guitar, and that's actually what made me want to make it in Runway to see how it would do it. So scroll down past these, and uh, yeah, there we go. Right there. Look at that. And that's running so real time. Yeah, and I wanted to see how Runway could compete with that. And I mean, Runway was really good, but this is <laughs> the speed <laughs> is on parallel. Time? Yeah, come on. And if you scroll down, there's a few other really incredible demos of um, they. So they use Dream Booth to train models, and then they you have ultra stylized models. Now check out the driving footage underneath there. Okay. Yeah, that's been AI generated. And these are generated 24 frames per second. Yeah. That is incredible. Um, the other day when I'm seeing all these uh, progresses, it kind of reminds me of the holodeck from Star Trek, where yeah. somebody could say something and then the, the, the immersive reality would regenerate into actual uh, scenes and sets and situations. Is this yeah. similar to how you think this may go in the future? Yeah, but I, I don't even think we'll need the actual holodeck, really. Um, once wearables and, and VR and, and stuff gets uh, to the point where it's the, the same weight as putting on a pair of glasses or something, not like a giant globe on your head, I think um, there won't be any need to fill the room with stuff. You'll just be able to sense it. And, and the, the I think the sensory stuff they're working on now will probably... Uh, like I don't I don't know if you spent a lot of time in VR, but even on the Quest, 
um, there's little things like little fans in the quest, and when the wind blows in the game, the fans blow on your face in the direction of the wind. And little things like that, little tiny incremental changes to the way we interact with stuff is going to make it way more immersive, in my opinion. That's beautiful. So many new ways to tell stories. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So with all this new tech, we're here in a digital art community where we're working with an open source software uh, based on Blender. We're creating 3D art with different things. Sometimes we could beat on Mondays, which, um, which we have done, or work with other communities creating this type of uh, hand-pushed polygons and pixels generated and rendered onto your hard drive, and also sometimes running live in game engines. So this art skill that we've been honing on for nearly a decade of work, or even just starting out, uh, for these artists, I sometimes get this sunk cost fallacy of like, I've, I've put so much work into this technique and working in 3D, working in games. So how do you think I should approach the future with this technology? I think the people that spent their time learning those skills will become the seniors on the staff of the places that they work at with the more junior, younger people using the tools and you probably bridging the gap between those tools and what is useful for a, a release. So, you know, it's great to build this stuff at AI, but like, as you're saying, like, just because I created a mesh in 3D, it doesn't mean that it's going to be game ready in any real tangible way because like i like i personally i don't even know how to make game assets but i do know that the process is extremely intense and very situational and that type of thing kind of extends to everything programming is like that uh, art is like that music is like that so while these tools seem rudimentary and stuff now if you track the progress from even a year ago to now and you extrapolate that at the speed at which it's moving, I think some of these things that are very hard for us to do will become easier. And my hope is that all the garbage that you have to wade through to do your creative work, that's the sort of task we'll be able to offload to the machine that can handle it. And then we can focus on the scope and the drive and the, the, the cohesiveness of our projects. Um, that's like ideal, the ideal world, but what will likely happen is, uh, a lot of the smaller jobs and the stuff where it doesn't matter as much will get s swooped up by houses just doing all this work in AI. And then, you know, regular people will have a harder time getting a, getting the jobs that they have now because they'll be able to be done by computers faster in farms. So we're going to have to figure out ways to, to be more creative with our tools. So I guess my, my thing is, like, try to get this stuff into your workflow so that mm. as the world changes, it's not as much of a shock to you. Okay, so where do you think I should begin when it comes to integrating these into my workflow? What do, would you suggest to start? For artists that already make stuff, um, I really think image to image is really cool. Taking your work and augmenting it with AI is really fun. Um, I think just, especially for people that already generate stuff and they don't want to just type words into a website and make, make stuff with it. Because there's definitely a big backlash against that. And, you know, that's fine. But isn't it cool that you can take stuff you made and, and, and bridge it with the, with the AI and, and prompt into something completely different? Like, the possibilities there are unignorably cool. Um, yes, I did test this out a little bit with some of my characters. For example, with this particular character here, I drew this maybe in 25 minutes, and then using a prompt, I changed it into a new character with a similar vibe, which I really liked. Yeah, really cool. yeah. Another thing that I did is I drew another picture in 25 minutes, this one here, which is a little bit messy, and then I cleaned it up with a particular prompt to see if I can get it kind of nice, which looked really good. Oh, right on. Uh, yeah, and you can control the sort of the input strength of all this stuff, so you can try true. and keep it really close to your, you know, initial, or you can really let it, <laughs> really let it dream. 
Yeah, that's true. This was one where I was trying different weights as well, where I designed this particular character with another 25 minutes. And then from there, I got into different poses, different character types, changed the suit, and tried different, uh, I guess you I could really say, like the, styles. Yeah, I like the racing one, the racing jumpsuit one. That's really cool. The bottom middle. Bottom this one here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that one looks really neat. Yeah, it's kind of nice. It was really cool because I could see iterations of my original design as something new and interesting and quick, which I thought was which very powerful. Which can push you in a new direction, like like that you might not even use that image but now you know oh no maybe i'll make an maybe maybe i'll make another person just like that or you know i don't know i i think the 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 main concern is people having their workflow replaced whereas i think you've got to look at it as 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 augmenting your workflow if you want to because nobody says you have to use ai you know what i mean right I just think it's wise to <laughs> to get on board now before uh, before you're left too far behind because there really is just crazy amount of innovation. So so that's awesome. true. Whoop. I mean, taking a look at some of your reels and your videos here on your Twitter, and some of them have been blowing me away. I've also remembered that some of your pieces were showcased directly with some of the larger communities and also on the actual services that do these like defire and, and unstable diffusion correct uh yeah i've uh i've had the i've had the honor of having my work used in um the launch video they used to uh announce dream studio and uh actually had four of my pieces in there um and uh some other stuff yeah and um i've been doing some interviews lately and uh I've got uh, something exciting to announce next week, but I can't say anything yet. And uh, yeah, I I, uh, I I try to stay uh, involved with the community because uh, they've given us so much. And um, I don't know, it's really cool to see a new group of artists emerge that might not necessarily uh, have uh, the same background as 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 traditional artists. I mean, there's a lot of traditional artists that use AI. Like, I, I consider myself a traditional artist in the sense that I've been making stuff since I was a kid. Uh, you know, it's this is just an extension of that. I'm not a, suddenly a new AI artist. I'm just an artist that uses AI. Um, and I think we can all be artists that use AI. I don't think there needs to be a fence. I don't think people need to absolutely pick one side of it. That's my friend Drew. He makes some amazing stuff. That's with... Um, uh, Wonder, Wonder Studio. Wonder Studio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's his surfing footage <laughs> recut with the character in it. Yeah, this really blew me away when I saw this as well. Yeah, it, it got his feet so good. Yeah, rock solid. And the clean Again, painting is nice. You could totally clean that up in Blender later if you really, really wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> the professor. A little bit of a hip twist there, but that was not bad. That's great. This one's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, like, considering what they're doing, this is absolutely mind-boggling. Could you imagine even seeing this last year? Saying, yeah, yeah, that was done in AI. Yeah, I, I've worked in visual effects doing clean plating before, and to see this done with a machine doing most of the work for you, I consider extremely useful. Yeah. I was slugging away for months to do this. And you could do this in a few seconds now. Okay, which leads me to my next question, like concerning work and competition. You mentioned that getting on board with these things and getting your, your feet wet to understand how they work and how this, uh, and putting it into your tool set concerning competition. How would you confront other people who use this technology or who become better at it than you? Is there a competition? Do, or should I be afraid for the competition? What's my, what kind of stance do you recommend I should take when it comes to people using technology and other people who are not? Uh, well, so for me, like uh, this has actually been an argument I've been a part of my whole life because I've been a musician and a producer and everyone's like what daw you know workstation do you use and it's like everyone cares about what 
DAW you use that it's a, do you use Ableton? Do you use logic? Do you use pro tools? Only, you know, only idiots use FL studio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my, my, my sort of view on that is like, if you are producing something, uh, good for you, uh, use your thing and have fun. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, some people make incredible music in FL studio. Some people make incredible music in Ableton. It, it, whatever suits your workflow go all forth and do it and like i would say worrying about what your neighbor's doing is probably the fastest way to like stop worrying about what you're doing and you should definitely be concerned with what you're doing <laughs> so i would say ignore them uh use them as inspiration and ignore them uh as as com as competitors because uh the like uh, i use this analogy a lot but the the bucket we the bucket we dip into like the we think the bucket that we dip into a, like a pond we're dipping it into a pond but we're dipping it into an ocean there's there's so many more people out there than you think there are that are gonna like your stuff so who cares if there's other people out there that either don't like it or uh you know come at you in a certain way it's like it that's it's too bad for them live your life keep smiling get a job make art keep it going mind your own yeah. matters exactly gotcha it's like there's no i i just think there's no point in competing with other people because they have completely different workflows what they do does not suit your workflow likely and if it's close to your thing and you didn't come up with it big deal or if you did come up with it and you never finished it that's on you <laughs> right Oh, I was going to do that. So, yeah, but you didn't. So you didn't. no worries. <laughs> You'll do the next thing. Oh, that's yeah, I good. Think, or, or people copy people copy me a lot. I get that a lot. Like, you know, I'll release something and then all of a sudden there's 10 things just like it. But I always know in the back of my mind, like, A, that's kind of flattering. And B, I'm going to come up with something else next week. So I don't know. It, it's not worth sweating that kind of stuff. If uh, if you have a well of ideas that's strong and you you can always go back to it, like you don't have to worry about other people, you know, aping your style or honing in on what you're doing because what if you're doing if what you're doing is truly unique, nobody else can really copy what you're doing. Yes, exactly. Based on your inspiration and your own story, experimentation, yeah. and time that you put into it, it's really good. This particular piece that I like, I've I've noticed that you like to do these loops in 3D with geometry nodes and Blender, and sometimes you've put it into a video to video. Um, so you converted one into these brush strokes, which I find fascinating. Can you explain a bit yeah. more about this technique? Yeah, that's um, Deforum. It's called hybrid video. Um, you're using a video uh, to drive the diffusion. And then you basically uh, tell it how much of the video you want to inform the dream. So for this one, I think it's about 20% mm, of the original video and maybe 80% dream. And uh, it's got um, the new thing has an optical flow uh, algorithm in it. So it can go in and like uh, warp the input footage so that... It's, this is all very technical, but it, it used to look really bad and flickery, and now it looks really smooth and lovely. Is the is the the TLDR about that? So basically, like, uh, yeah, to form hybrid video using an input video, writing a prompt for a Dream, you schedule prompt changes as well. Um, so you can say like at, at frame 60 change to a different prompt to frame 120 change to a different prompt. So it, you can you can tell a story by by sort of uh, stacking your prompts in that way and literally every function of deforum is schedulable like that it's beautiful it's quite mesmerizing i find this is quite a useful uh, tool for music a tool for concerts big ex uh, exhibits it's very yeah. interesting I remember spending time as a kid looking at the curtains as the light shines through as so i was forced to take an afternoon nap during the summer couldn't <laughs> sleep it's very hot so just look at the you keep your eyes still you look at the curtains and then your brain starts to see new shapes right so you start to mildly hallucinate 
Yeah. Or when you rub your eyes when they're closed and you get all the psychedelic all the colors and things and shapes that form in others. Oh, that's really nice. Okay. So when it comes to this art and the self critique, I noticed that you mentioned do not compare yourself with others. Uh, focus on your own work, focus on your own stories, keep ahead of the curve by just staying busy, doing what you like to do. doesn't matter how you do it. So, but sometimes our brains has a lot of self-critique. So I had a comment about uh, uh, one of the users here in Discord. He competed with a number of others in like a, a state-funded competition also sometimes we compete on Monday in Aaron Dow's Discord server. And sometimes, well, we see other people's art and either we get inspired or we feel competitive. Or sometimes we see our own art and we don't like it or we think it's not great or it is great. When it comes to self-critique, what do you think is a healthy mentality to, can, to work your self-critique? Uh... I work on stuff until I like it, and if I don't like it soon enough, I delete it. I've built that from uh, years of wasting time writing songs. Like, uh, not everything you start is finishable, if, that's, if that makes sense. Like, not, not every project you start is worth finishing. And I think learning... Uh, where to draw that line and decide, you know, this is garbage. It's never going to be good. And not in a self-deprecating, uh, like depression type of vibe, but, uh, just be absolutely real with yourself. Like this was a cool idea. I can't pull it off. That's fine. I'm going to try something else. And I really think like being able to know when to do that and then when to push through that is, is really a skill that you need to develop. And, I developed it with music and I, it just immediately translated to the visual stuff I started doing where I was just like, when I'm working on something, if it's like, if I can see down the road that this is still going to suck eight moves later, I'm out. I just delete it and start over. And that has saved me. I can't even begin to tell you how much time that has saved me. Um, I'm all about learning and I'm all about, you know, education, but there is. I know you cut out there for a second. One sec. Uh, who's still there? Yeah, yep, still here. Yeah, like there's a masochistic urge to just push through and like and and complete like something that you're working on. But sometimes I really think it is good to step back and go, this process is going to be garbage. It's all good. Let me try something else. And don't be mad at yourself because you tried it. It's all good. So it's learning to let go when things become a little too difficult. Well, not a little too difficult, but there's a there's like a meter in your brain and you can just right. tell when something is going to be like a slog and it's often not worth the slog unless the end result is just you can see the end result is going to be incredible and you've always wanted to learn that thing and you know like like i guess for like uh, here's a good example i'm working on a 3d uh animation and it's really cool and the character's walking through this forest and everything's awesome and I can't decide, I, like, I really want to add like volumetric steam to the scene. And I really want it to be like alive in 3D. So do I spend like five days learning how to simulate the entire forest full of steam to have the character walk through it? Or do I spend $5 on Ian Hubert's steam plates and learn how to place them in the scene so that I get the same result in five minutes? Like there is definitely a, sometimes you should just take that shortcut get it done look it through the camera if it looks good you're finished move on that's definitely my like i uh i watched this documentary <laughs> i'm gonna keep just rambling but i watched this documentary with steven spielberg where he's like i'd rather do the, like his i guess one of the actors was like should we do that again and he's like no and then he'll go and shoot the next scene and then he went to talk to him afterwards and he's like, you know, I think we could have got a better take. And he's like, yeah, but I can just go do another scene uh, right now. Uh, and, you know, I'll just pick and choose from the stuff when I'm done. He's like, there's not, there's no time to sit and perfect it. If it's, you know, if it looks good, use it. If it doesn't, you know, move on. Move on. Fascinating. Um, 
So Osama has asked another question as a follow-up about this. He's asking about the imposter syndrome. Even oh, yeah. if I'm able to create something and people praise it, my mind keeps telling me that it's rubbish and that I'm not good enough. How do you confront that? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I have felt that and I, I, I do, I think, well, okay. So I was really lucky in the early 2000s or in the mid 2000s or 2011, I played a big festival in our city for like thousands and thousands of people downtown. And that kind of just broke any semblance of imposter syndrome that I had. Um, and like, I can't recommend that because that's not feasible for everyone to be able to just go perform on stage in front of thousands of people. But what I will say is, um, once something like that happens, you realize, uh, there's so many people out there that like you feeling like an imposter. That's actually, everyone feels that like the you go ask the most famous artists in the world and they feel it too. And th- you just have to understand that that's just your brain. You belong. You absolutely belong. You showed up. You did the work. You belong. That's it. Remember that and just stand your ground. Like a lot of the stuff that you'll find, the imposter syndrome, was people attacking you. That's coming from their insecurity, mm-hmm. not yours. You just need to sit and remember I'm a person, I have a lifetime a lifetime of knowledge, a lifetime of skills, a lifetime of, of everything, all the inspiration that brought me here. And I'm just as valid as you are. And that is, that should be your driving mantra because everyone deserves a seat at the table. Everybody, nobody, you know, nobody, nobody, yeah. You, nobody just gets it. Which I think this is an interesting topic because um, when it comes to, all these new tools that makes life easier. For example, this automat system from Wonder Studio that you can use. I also yeah. notice that sometimes when you're using uh, local generation on with stability, you can also uh, extract mats from moving things. Um, I assume if I started using these tools and making my life easier or in the future where I'm using something like Cascador or uh, where it has... AI machine learned uh, body mechanic posing, or I use yeah. um, something by, I think it was Rococo. They had an AI system for extracting motion capture from videos. I assume if my work becomes very easy by what I want to do compared to standards in the past, maybe I start to feel like I'm an imposter by using technology to get the job done. Maybe I feel like I'm not doing, I'm doing, I'm doing the easy route by using somebody's asset pack, or I made a game with assets that I purchased on the Unreal and Epic Game Store, or something like this. Right. Uh, Does an accountant feel like an imposter when they use a spreadsheet to calculate a table of data instead of sitting down and using a calculator to calculate every single uh, row? Or are they just getting their job done? That's the mentality you're supposed to have. It's, I think that's the healthiest way to look at it. There's a new tool. It saves you time. Uh, you can use it if you want to, and you probably should because it frees you up to do other stuff. Focus like, on Who the doesn't story. want to do their job faster? Like, I don't understand why that... I, that's one thing I will never understand is people wanting to stick to something that's old. Like, I, I get having control, and that's fine, but if... If the solution you have is as good or better than your handmade stuff, that's not something to rebel against. That's something to rejoice in because now you can focus on like everything else around your thing that actually matters as opposed to all the technical minutia that you get ro- caught up in. Like if you really like retopologizing meshes, good on you. That's great. I would rather eat an entire stick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, the root topology is not fun, I agree. Some people it can be quite zen, which it, when you get into the zone it can be. Oh yeah, all things are like that. I guess and so. craft is craft, right? Like there's always yes. going to be a need for crafts people. Like there's always going to be, a, even if, when I can AI generate amazing drums, uh, drum parts from you know other drummers, I'm still going to want to hear incredible drummers play the drums because... You know, there's a craft to it that someone spent their life honing. 
and that that is also to be celebrated it's true and i guess this whole confronting the whole imposter syndrome i think we're reaching there are a lot of generations we have a lot of uh the internet came out in the late 90s and then we had the first wave of 3d software in the late 90s into the early 2000s and then we've had two decades since then and we're hitting the third decade of uh, digital content creation so this is an entire childhood for some people plus their adolescence plus their young ages and we're getting to the point where youtube now is a couple of decades old and everything that we thought we knew is continuing to evolve as it has been but it becomes a little bit scary i suppose when it comes to these new things so you feel like oh i i guess maybe the person who was working with acetone and filling out cells where people were, people were working in an animation sweatshop practically filling in um, the animation that a lead animator would create but they'll be doing the in-betweens and the tweens draw drawn by by ink onto the acetone and filling it in painting it with ink which is toxic for some people mm. and then capturing every frame and then replacing it with another sheet of plastic and capturing the next frame it's and doing this all day breaking it's back breaking work yes it, it ruins your body, ruins your hands, ruins your health. And people can still do it and enjoy it. And mm -hmm. I will still watch a hand-drawn movie any day. I yeah. love it. And, but if they can make it at their own pace instead of being forced like to work on it like 19 hours a day. You know? That's true. And also, that's one. going back to the acetone, I remember the game Cuphead. Cuphead yeah, came Cuphead out. was great. And also the Netflix series that was inspired by it. Many people were employed and they made their craft and they did this out of enjoyment, not because it was their job uh, out of necessity. I thought that was an interesting concept because acetone techniques of rendering animation through cells on, on plastic sheets with ink hasn't gone away, hasn't been 100% replaced. So I'm wondering if that... Is another mentality that we're going to have to face, even with the own technologies that we've been picking up over the past decade or the past two decades, which is including game asset creations, game games done with old polygons, even even the concept of polygons and triangles. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the next wave of 3D tools. We don't even really have anything yet. Then everybody's freaking out. Like uh, when we actually have stuff that'll like auto rig characters and 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 do realistic animations, and you just write a script. It's like I want this character to walk into the room and then you know walk over here to the table and put a keys down and pick up an onion. <laughs> like, it's just gonna be like it's gonna be nuts. You'll just be directing movies by writing them, and that's that's so exciting. That's true. White Rooster has mentioned in the comments about. Um, confronting the concept of feeling like the self-critique is sometimes asking for help is something that you need to work on yeah, when you're in that situation. That's a good, that's a good tip. And also, yeah, it... I well, as you know, Dre's, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no uh, stranger to asking for help. <laughs> I think, um, I think that's really healthy too. Like, uh, I will scream for help uh, and bother my friends while they're busy. Uh, and not everybody has that gene either. Um, I get that some people would, would be mortified by annoying their friends with stuff, but uh, I know that deep down inside, Dre's wants to help me. Of course, I love helping you. <laughs> and you helped me the <laughs> so... other day. You helped me, actually. I was afraid of using Resolve, to be honest. And I was also afraid of using Stable Diffusion, but with this new computer, I got the hardware, I can actually use the software. And you've yeah, it's really overwhelming from like the if you're just standing outside the forest and looking at it, it's like uh, the big forest, another app, another whole thing, a whole technique, yeah. a whole model, a whole uh, model that has been trained on something else. It's... Yeah, it's just you got to just small digestible bites. There's a few YouTubers actually. Uh, Olivia, so I'll look it up in a minute. They do like you know, almost daily videos on like developments in stable diffusion and stuff like that. And that kind of stuff's really good to subscribe to. You know, when you're bored, you just click on one of those videos and, and you just start absorbing all the things that stable diffusion can do. And then like, you know, you'll, so the ideas will start to come to your head. You'll be like, oh, I could use that thing that I saw. And it's just like Blender tutorials. It's, they, they start to stack up and then all of a sudden you can just do everything. 
beautiful. White Rooster also mentioned about the confidence of confronting your imposter syndrome is that it's built over time. You never know mm -hmm. yeah, you're that's dope true. till you've experienced your own success. <laughs> um, but also, uh, it's not good to tie success to your self-worth. Uh, I really think you need mm. to find a way to separate that because if you put all of your self-worth into how successful you are, uh, you're going to be miserable before you ever become successful. Uh, so uh, success is amazing and success is uh, life-changing and all of that stuff, but it's not the reason why we make stuff, in my opinion. That's an interesting outlook to it as well, because um, yeah, success is definitely not happiness, yeah. but it helps. <laughs> yeah, obviously, it's it a nice, a it's a nice boost yeah. to the ego when things start yeah, yeah. to re people recognize you for yeah. your work. You start getting paid for everything that you do. Your yeah, work. That's a, yeah, that yeah. is when the imposter syndrome really does start to dissolve. But that being said, um, letting it letting it derail you at the beginning is 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 worse because you probably could have you probably you probably can hang you're just uh you're just nervous and that's fine you're allowed to be anxious and nervous i have i have crippling social anxiety normally but for whatever reason i can get on stage and talk and i can and do these things and i, I can i can do small groups of people or i can do very large groups of people but like i really hate parties and things like that like it's all good everybody's got their own little quirks like uh it's yeah i don't want to get into a whole thing about anxiety and, and art but like uh, a lot of artists have you know anxiety about everything anyway so adding the sort of tying success to your uh your uh imposter syndrome is only going to feed that anxiety so i would definitely like just try to try to just be mindful about uh just making art because you want to make art and do it because you like to do it on the methods that you need. Interesting, because it's a fine line, it's a fine balance, like the whole concept of competition and then not competing, but then there's the self-critique, but being yeah, okay with are, it. You are still kind of competing. And yeah, the well, that does, that also, big, big thing there, that don't make your hobby your job. I've got friends that are, prof like, I'm a drummer, I've been a drummer my whole life. Uh, and I do gigs and I do uh, studio sessions, but I don't do a lot of like uh, weekly bar band gigs and uh, <clears throat> rib fests, weddings and stuff like that, because you start to like, I've got friends that do that and I can tell they don't love playing anymore. And that kills me. It just kills me. And I, I never want that. Like you can make your hobby your job, but you you really don't want to the job has to be something you're creatively uh creatively um uh enriched by or else you're going to really really start resenting it and you do not want to resent your art or your creativity or this part of you because that's yeah that's dangerous territory it's true cool well, man time flies i'm enjoying this conversation so it looks like we have about 20, 15 minutes left on this session. And I really appreciate your kind words about this whole situation because I was feeling, obviously there's the gut-wrenching feelings like, oh my God, why am I doing what I'm doing when something can be so easy with something else? I felt that just for a moment, but your sense of mentality of confronting your, yourself, the, the world, and the arts and also enjoying what you do and also learning to discard with things that hold you back to confront your failings and work with them and keep being creative. You are a very uh, inspiring and happy artist that I know and you've, you've swum against the current, you've swum with the current and it's been hugely inspiring. So I really appreciate everything you've said today. I know Thanks, you. Thanks, buddy really good but um since time is ticking and we do have a lot of art from the community i wanted to ask you would you like to take a look at the animations we have a lot of animations this time uh submitted as finished art from this community and see what you think absolutely not oh, okay <laughs> not even a little bit all right <laughs> i'm just kidding let's go let's go let's do this okay
So the first piece that we have today is by Kata. Katy. So Katy has created this sword piece. She was here, or he, I'm not sure. They were here earlier. Um, and they um, fortunately had to That's disconnect. Sick. So they made this piece and they textured it and they shared it into the community. So I really liked it. it. Yeah. That's a great blend of low poly and like high detail, like just enough detail. Very nice. Yeah. Love it. So as the next piece, what would you like to see from Katy? If you hear for later, what's your name? Um, let's, let's take a wild guess. What do you think would be a cool complimentary piece to the sword? Oh, I don't know. A shield. A shield. There we go. I think it's a good one. So yeah, next... I would make an armor set, maybe. I think that's good. And then we have, by Chris Brad, we have a piece um, created of this globe. So there is a little bit of audio. Whoa. Let's see if I can put it on. <laughs> loved it i like the light speed effect i like the i love the way the earth comes out of like how you like come out of warp there very 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 star trek it is good and the uh, suzanne reveal is great <laughs> proportionally really cool too that's no moon that's no moon exactly very nice. Mm -hmm. And the other piece that we had a look at is I'm kind of drunk, which I'm actually going to invite here right now today. So he can explain his piece a little bit. So I'm kind of drunk. Let me invite you to speak. There we go. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, buddy. Can you hear me? Yes, I yeah. can hear you fine. Oh, so just one more thing, Grace. Uh, before we talk about my work, since we're here, I'd like to... <laughs> talk about first and say that i'm a huge fan of his work and i wanted to mention again the coolest thing that i learned from him was a quote that he said give knowledge for free and charge for convenience and i find that very very amazing man i, I thank you for that you're, Thanks, you're such a cool you're such a cool guy to have around in the community uh, thank you, you too, so man. much this is great by the way this this is awesome Yes, I love this piece. I saw this all. I, I saw this all year, earlier this week, and I love like that last scene vibe. Yeah, oh. I really like the floor. The floor feels like it's got like fingerprints in it almost. That's awesome. Yeah, I love the I love the chair as well. Like um, this blobby chair over here with the crooked legs, yeah. and the laptop. <laughs> the shelf. Very good. So tell me about this piece I'm kind of drunk. Why did you make this? Oh, this was for a challenge on the Brazilian Discord server. Since you guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be like you more of you guys, like helping people and getting Sweet. involved with local artists. And uh, the challenge was uh, to make an isometric scene. And since I, <laughs> I, I slacked up, so we had 15 days to do this. And I started on the last 23 hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I work. I yeah, just... that's how I work too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to think of something like out of the box, like out of the common or something. And then uh, I realized that I, I had this material laying around from a tutorial by Southern Shorty. And mm -hmm. I said, well, since I cannot make decent models in enough time, Let's make terrible models, but apply <laughs> a clay material, so it'll pass. That's exactly I actually, how I work. I re yeah, I really I like the models. See, like I I don't know, I wouldn't call them terrible because they're they exactly get across the point of what the thing is, and to me that's like they look like clay models. Like I think you nailed it. I wouldn't call them bad. I wouldn't call them bad. Yeah, it looks good. Um, I actually have one of my projects open at the moment here and um if you look at the topology of my work that i usually do especially specifically the painterly everything is triangulated <laughs> everything's got angles. topology is my passion topology is my passion <laughs> and it's absolutely uh like look at these characters like there's no coherent topology anyway game ready game ready 
and that's how I flow. That's how I work, mainly because I did your technique of using the shaders. So if I take a look at the final render here. Yeah, once you look at it through the camera, oh, none of that so matters. Cool. Yeah, so once Perfect. you have that, and the shaders are looking all right, then it's, it's fine. And the topology is not, it's the least of your worries, unless you need performance. And it also adds the art style because your broken, broken in quotes, topology makes the strokes look like, like, like drawn strokes. Like it co actually complements the sh the shader complement or the topology complements the shader, and the shader complements the topology. Like it's not just it's not just lazy. It actually serves a purpose, which is really cool. Exactly. And you did a similar concept with your laptop, with the rounded blobbiness you made which mm -hmm. i thought was that really is believable as plasticine or the chair shape here or even the slab of plasticine on the bed with the crooked shape yeah. you played into it quite oh, nicely so nice work for there. for non-brazilian speakers uh, what's written on that piece of paper is don't use booleans <laughs> don't use booleans because <laughs> that's how i made the cutouts and everything on this basically right I'm actually quite happy that you managed to not get any glitches. I use booleans in animation and I always had problems. Oh, I just use the fast solver instead of the exact for this yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, it's, I don't know why, but it's better. For animations, I don't know why. Makes sense. Makes sense. Plus, you're also going frame by frame. Like, I bet you would actually see errors if you like went literally frame by I frame. I did. Yes. But when it's going, when it's move, when the video is moving at 24 frames a second, it, it's all good. <laughs> you're not gonna see that one frame where there's like a bad face. It's just, it's all good. It's all good. I quite That's like another the... thing I would definitely say is ignore the like. Learn to ignore the like the stuff that's gonna take you a month to figure out that really doesn't matter. That's true. I guess that's the way that you can work. Like sometimes your self critique is not necessary. Or maybe you can see the issues. I found that issue with um, a lot of my work actually um, that I had to confront. I've had deadlines. I've had a lot of work to do, but sometimes I just had to say, well, let's just send it to the client, see if they notice. If they don't notice, I, I can get away with it. I don't need to be that perfect. Let's just let's get it out the door. Let's get it done. Yeah, perfect is a trap. Perfect doesn't exist, really. That's there's, true. there's good enough, and there's, there's done. It's true. Okay. So and plus, yeah. that thing that another just to go back to that another thing is you, you might work on something like that forever, and you not only did your client not notice it, but they want something else, and now you're gonna have to repeat all that work on something else anyway. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, sometimes it's just not worth investing the time unless they've specifically requested it. That's true. Then I, they might not want to pay you for that time. Yeah, that is a bit too much work. Okay, so we got one other piece. So thanks, I'm kind of drunk. I'm really happy you did this piece. I hope you do well with the competition, even if it was last minute. Oh, actually, I'm on fourth place. Oh, nice. nice. But the thing is, we only had four contestants. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, where do we vote? Where do we oh, vote? <laughs> uh, but thank you guys it's it's okay it's okay to lose sometimes like people like birds were saying there's a million people that are better than me but i was happy making it so it's okay yeah yeah it's a cool piece that's true and like that it. was the topic of today as well sometimes it's not a competition yeah even when it is <laughs> even when it is <laughs> okay. even when it is literally a competition that's true all right, we got another piece by Dynamic CG. Um, he connected earlier. Oh, sick. Whoa, whoa, where'd it go? Sorry, one second. So Dynamic CG. Um, Dynamic CG is not here at the moment, but That's I do great. like to showcase his work because he is following tutorials, but he's doing all of the tutorials very well. Yeah, yeah, this is really good. This looks like a ducky one or something. Yeah, exactly. It's good, though. It's It's more, I think... If it is, it looks like they went and made it their own thing, which is really cool. It's really nice. That's something I always recommend when doing those tutorials is like, after you've done it, go make, go make something in that style that's completely your own. That's good. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. We've been here for nearly an hour. And as a summary, just 
just a quick summary, we've uh, had a talk with Perz, who has been an excellent um, person to talk to concerning confronting uh, creativity with the new tools, confronting the idea of, let me just look at my notes, confronting self-critique and how to do it in a healthy way, different mentalities to work on your art. We had a look at different advice when it comes to new technology. We've had a look at um, different people's art together and we've had a very good time. So I wanted to say thank you, Perz, for your time today. Thank you, Dres. And I will see you all in the same place, same time next week here on Friday at 2015 UTC. So talk to you later. Bye bye. Oh. Oh, and before I go, if you have art that you'd like to have reviewed or questions that you'd like me to investigate for the future, feel free to write here in the b Artist Discord server and join free to be showcased in the future. So stay tuned. And thank you, everyone.